On November 18, 1987, three members of the Dardeen family were found brutally murdered in their home in Ina, Illinois. The head of their family, husband and a father, Keith Dardeen, was nowhere to be found and was suspected to have killed his family. However, Keith would also be found dead the following day. A decade later, a serial killer would confess to the killings, but the case would still remain unsolved. It was 1986. Aina was a small rural town of about 490 occupants. The town had a store, bank, gas station, firehouse and a post office, but nothing else. In 1986, Russell Keith Dardeen, who preferred to go by his middle name, completed his training for his job as a treatment plant operator. Keith was a native of Mount Carmel and after completing his training, he bought a trailer and moved to Aina to be closer to his job. His wife, Ruby Elaine Dardeen, who was from Albion, would move to Aina with the couple's two-year-old son, Peter, shortly after. They rented a land close to Keith's job at a water treatment facility in the woodlands beside Route 37 from a nearby farming couple. Keith's wife, Ruby Elaine Dardeen, who too preferred to go by her middle name, worked at an office supply store in Mount Vernon. Keith and Elaine were avid churchgoers and when they were not working, they played in a musical ensemble in a local Baptist church. Keith was the lead singer while Elaine played the piano. In 1987, Elaine became pregnant with her second child. They were going to name their new child either Ian or Casey, depending upon the gender of the child. As they were welcoming their new child, Keith put up his trailer for sale and decided on moving from the area to a safer place. The area they had been living in had been becoming increasingly violent and the family did not feel safe living in the area. There had been 15 homicides in Jefferson County during the span of just two years. With the increase in violence, Keith became so protective of his family that on one occasion he refused entry to his home to a young woman who had asked to use their phone. Keith's mother said that Keith wanted to move back to Mount Carmel even if he were unable to find a job and that he regretted ever moving to Aina. On November 18, 1987, Keith did not show up for work and did not inform anyone that he was not coming to work that day. He was an extremely reliable worker and his supervisor thought this was out of character for him. He became concerned when calls to his house went unanswered. He then called Keith's parents who said they hadn't seen him either. Keith's parents became worried when they called and no one answered the phone. Keith's father, Don Dardeen, called the sheriff's office and agreed to drive down to Aina with the spare house key and meet deputies at Keith's house. After reaching the trailer, they knocked on the door and when no one answered, they used the spare key to enter the trailer. Once inside, they were met with a crime scene so violent and gruesome that it would haunt them for the rest of their lives. Inside, in the same bed, were the bodies of Elaine, her three-year-old son Peter, and a newly born baby girl. Both Peter and Elaine had been bound and gagged with a duct tape and beaten to death with a baseball bat found at the crime scene. The baseball bat had been a birthday present to Peter from Keith earlier that year. Elaine had been beaten so grievously that she had gone into labor and given birth to the girl two months before her due date. The killer or killers 
took no mercy and beat him the newborn to death as well. Elaine had suffered a blow on the right top of her head that had fractured her skull and Peter had suffered numerous abrasions and contusions and his skull was also fractured. At first Keith was suspected of the crime as he was nowhere to be found. Keith's car, a red 1981 Plymouth, was missing and police believed Keith murdered his family in a fit of rage and was on the run. However, friends and family did not believe Keith would harm his family. A team was quickly assigned to search for him, but the search quickly ended when a group of hunters found his body in a wheat field approximately a mile away. Keith had been shot three times, once in the front skull, once in the right side of the face and one on the left cheek. His penis was also cut off. His car was parked outside the police station in the town of Penton, 11 miles from his home. His blood was found splattered in the car and police concluded that he was likely murdered in his car. An autopsy concluded he was likely killed within one or two hours from the rest of the family. News of the killings caused an unrest among the people living in the area. Many residents bought guns and carried them everywhere to protect themselves. Before the murders, locals used to leave their doors unlocked but now they checked twice to make sure they were locked. A coroner in a nearby Franklin County said that the locals were so scared to let the strangers into their homes that if someone was to run out of gas on a country road, instead of knocking on the doors, they would have a better luck walking the highway or hitching a ride. A total of 30 detectives were assigned to the case working day and night. More than a hundred people were interviewed but the police were stumped to find a motivation for the killings. No one had anything bad to say about the family. The trailer home was in order with no sign of forced entry. The back door of the trailer had been left open. A VCR, a portable camera, cash and jewelry were lying in plain sight but none of it was stolen. The killer or killers had also made an attempt to clean up the crime scene suggesting they were not in a hurry to leave. Elaine had not been sexually assaulted and police found no evidence to suggest that Elaine or Keith had any extramarital affairs that could have led to the murders. Police did find a small amounts of marijuana in the trailer but it wasn't enough to suggest that they were involved in drug dealings. In fact, police started to believe that marijuana may have belonged to the killers. The family wasn't known to be in debts or known anyone who held grudges against them. A stack of papers with sports scores were found in the house and police wondered if Keith had been in gambling debts. However, it was quickly ruled out. The murders were so brutal that the locals started to believe that Satanist cults were responsible but a police expert ruled them out, as cults often mutilate bodies extensively and leave symbols and lit candles at the crime scene. Police did not believe they were randomly chosen, but that it was very personal. Keith's mother Joanne said, I think someone wanted Keith to sell drugs and he refused. There's also a possibility that someone liked Elaine and she would not accept his advances and he took out his rage on both of them. We just don't know. With little leads to follow, the case started to go cold. Joanne worked hard to keep the public interest in the case. She would call the detectives throughout 1990s, offering possible leads she had gathered or asking for any information on the case. She was able to collect more than 3,000 signatures from residents asking the Oprah Winfrey show to air the case but the producers of the show turned her down, stating that the crime was too brutal to be featured on daytime television. America's Most Wanted also turned down airing the show at first, but eventually ran a segment in 1998. However, the feature failed to generate any leads. In 1999, Tommy Lynn Sells was arrested for cutting the throats of two girls near Del Rio, Texas. 
one of the girls survived and was able to identify cells as the killer. He was convicted and sentenced to death for that murder and another one he committed earlier in 1999. While in prison, he started confessing to a number of other murders that he claimed to have committed while hitchhiking and hopping trains to get around the country. Among these murders, he claimed to have murdered the Dardeen family. In 2010, Sells claimed that in November of 1987, while traveling through Jefferson County, he met Keith at a truck stop or maybe a pool hall and Keith invited him to his home for dinner. After the meal, Sells said Keith suggested to engage in a threesome with him and Elaine. He claimed that this alleged sexual offer had set him off and in an uncontrollable rage, he murdered the whole family. However, friends and family and the police do not believe this, given how protective Keith was of his family to even consider letting strangers into his home. Sells was interviewed numerous times and during these questionings, his story changed several times. Sells gave details that were consistent with the general facts that were already reported publicly. However, he was less reliable when asked about the details that were not revealed to the general public. Joanne initially believed Sells was the murderer when he first confessed in 2000. But as the years went by, she was pretty sure he was not the culprit. Sells confessed to more than 70 murders, but police were only able to link him to 22 murders, with the Dardine family not being one of them. He was executed in 2014. More than 33 years have passed and police have been unable to find a motive for the brutal murders of the Dardine family. The case remains open and unsolved.